that are joining us. I always want to welcome all of you that are joining us to be a part of this teaching during this time of consecration, during this time of prayer and consecration, and God is adding the facet of hearing the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I want those that can get on Facebook, if you will share this, if you will share this on your page, if you will share this on your page, uh, so that you can get some insight on what it is that God wants to say to us in uh, Jesus' name. Amen? And, uh, and it's always a blessing, again, to be able to hear uh, the word Amen. of the Lord, to hear teaching. And I, and I tell you, uh, the teaching is what it is that's keeping us during these troubling times and these difficult times so that we be able uh, to uh, be right where we need to be uh, in God. And so I want to uh, continue in that flow of vein of being able to minister to the word of the Lord. I want to talk about uh, get out of the way. I want to talk about get out of the way, which is so very important uh, in our teaching tonight uh, as it relates to us being able to understand. God bless you. I see you, uh, Sister Horn. Thank you uh, for joining us. Brother Ricky, God bless you. Amen for joining us uh, so that we may be able uh, to make sure that we're where we are. And I, now I want you to share this on your page. Somebody on your page need to hear this message. Somebody on your page need to hear this uh, on this message. Sister Teresa, God bless you. It's been a while since I've seen you. Bless you and your husband uh, in the name of the Lord. I'm looking at Proverbs, the third chapter, and I'm reading Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth and the sixth verse. Again, I want to talk about get out of the way. Get out of the way. It's what I want to talk about. Here, here, here is the word of the Lord. He says it on this wise. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. This is a very familiar passage of scripture. And lean not unto thy own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him. That is Christ. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all of thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God bless you, Bishop Wilkers. Blessing to you and your ministry. Blessing to my little brother, Brother Raymond. Uh, good to see you on live as well. I want to talk about this for these few moments to get out of the way. So that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about get out of the way. If we're going to trust in the Lord, and uh, that we're going to depend on him and we're going to rely on him then we've got to get to a place in our lives where we get out of the way and allow God to show us the path that we should go and it's interesting because there are a lot of people and I, and I often uh, use this for an example uh, of what uh, the proverbial or rather the, uh, uh, the writer the Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, that is. William Shakespeare, the poetic writer, is what I wanted to say, that, that talked about being, uh, to thine own self be true. To thine own self be true. And and uh, you, can, you can be false to everybody you come in contact with. You can be untruthful to everybody you come in contact with. But the only person that you need to be truthful at least to, uh, certainly you need to be true to yourself. And uh, when I say be true to yourself, and that is, you got to get to a place that if you really want help, then you need to let, allow people to help you. And you know yourself, if you need help, if you desire help, if you really, really, really want help, then you've got to get to the place that you're willing to humble yourself and accept the help that people wants to offer you. Good to see you, uh, Edna. Good to see you, Brother Greg, as well, joining us live. And it's interesting because when he talks about in all of thy ways, uh, uh, acknowledge him, it is an expression. It's, it's an expression. In all of your ways, it's an expression that covers the whole spectrum of life. When you talk about um, in all of our ways, and we're going to deal with that word ways because I need to give you something on that. When you deal with the whole concept of in all of our ways, acknowledge him, it's an expression. Your ways is an expression. All right? 
your ways. And I need a, I need somebody, to, I need an assistant uh, that, that would help me tonight because I'm going to give us some scriptures tonight. And I want somebody, matter of fact, Sister Sandra, I want you, uh, God bless you, uh, Sandra, and I'm sure Walter's listening to you. Sandra, I need you to put these scriptures in for me as we go. Good to see you, Elder Tripp Gordon. God bless you there in Florence, my Florence, South Carolina family. Uh, Sister Sandra Miller, I want you to put this in the comment line, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth through the sixth verse. We're talking about trusting in the Lord with all of thine heart and not to lean to your own understanding, your knowledge, your wisdom of what you think is right, but you should acknowledge God. And again, we're going to deal with that whole concept of ways because your way has an expression. How you act has an expression. The things that you do have an expression. Most people say that it's not what you say, it is your body language, it's how you react, it's how you do things, it's, 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 it's your body language. I didn't say anything, it's, I didn't say anything to you, but it's your body language that shows everything about what you feel, what's going on in your mind. We can, we can change our demeanor. And, uh, and when we change our demeanor, uh, Deja, uh, Dave Runner, when we change our meaner, uh, demeanor, then that shows and that tells all. That tells all. That tells all. Somebody can be sitting there, look at you and say, what's wrong with you? And they're asking that because your demeanor changed. You're not acting the same way. There is a way about yourself that have changed. And it's interesting because the, provide, the proverbial writer says, again, Proverbs 3, Five through six. The proverbial writer says, in all of thy ways, in all of thy ways, in all of thy ways, this word ways can be defined as a road path. It can be defined as a road or a path, a highway that is giving passage from one way. Thank you, Dave Brown, and thank you so much, sweetheart. Put these scriptures in there. Uh, that gives a passage from one place to another. You know, that's your job anyway, Dave Brown. But giving a passage place from one place to another. Your way, the word ways can be defined as a conduct, right? It gives a passage or a direction to a particular conduct. Not only that, Way can also be defined as a manner or method of doing something. Good to see you, Nakia. Uh, 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 a manner, a way of doing something. It is, it, is, it is what we see. It is your action of what it is that you're doing. Ways go further to mean something that someone does, right? We're talking about go that way, go that way, go that way, go that way. There is that's a way, or or your ways about yourself. There is a way about you that is showing what you have focusing in your mind. It goes to show us that is a way is something that we do, or it is a particular behavior. It's a particular behavior, it's an action. So as to say, we have a lot of ways. Uh, now, let's be honest with those that are watching me on uh, today. Uh, you have a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about uh, some of the things tonight. You have a lot of ways. And I'm sure you've heard this because uh, listen to me carefully. And I want you to get in my face. Get in my face. Get in my face and listen to me today. When he talks about in all that ways, acknowledge him. He's talking about all of those ways that you have. Some people have multiple ways about themselves. You know it's true that you are a certain way at home. You are a certain way on your job. You're a certain way uh, when you get among your friends. You're a certain way when you're with your family. You're a certain way when you're on your job. You're a certain way when you're at church. <laughs> You're a certain way when you're at church, how you function and how you do when you are at church, when you're at home. That's a certain way about yourself. You deal uh, differently. You deal with different ways in different actions and different feelings and different emotions wherever you go. You make up your ways, your emotions, your feelings make up your ways. Your ways, that's her ways. She has trifling ways. He has cheating ways. He has evil ways. She has bad ways. They have the, you, you talk about it because of what we see. Well, some of you might say, well, you need to stop judging me. I'm not judging you. Ye shall know them by their fruit. So why is it that you're not bearing fruit that you are that type of person? 
and accusing me of judging you. I'm only calling out what I see. As a matter of fact, I'm what is called a fruit inspector. You, if you're a born again believer, you are a fruit inspector. That's all you are. You see people and you call what you see. The old man would tell me, son, I call it like I see it. So he tells us in all of those ways, again, I just said the way you are in church, the way you are at home, the way you are at work, the way you are among relationships or with your friends. God bless you, Sister Debbie. <coughs> the way you are, when you understand that the way you are is the way that you are around other people, God says, I want you to acknowledge me with all of those ways. If I read the Amplified Version, I'm going to read it. It says in the Amplified Version of the Bible, again, that's Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, we're still there. He says, in all of thy ways, know and acknowledge and recognize God. In the midst of your ways, you need to recognize who God is. That's what he says. First of all, he says to trust in the Lord with all of thy heart. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. The sixth verse, in all of thy ways, uh, Pastor Cooper, in all of thy ways, we should acknowledge him. In those ways when you don't feel like being bothered, it is the ways that you have that God wants you to give to him. Very seldom, very hard for you to change your ways. But if you give it to God, God will change everything about you. So we must first acknowledge and recognize him as God. Acknowledge him as God. And when you acknowledge him as God, he will make your path straight. He will smooth out the rough edges. He will remove obstacles that blocks your way. That's what the scripture talks about, that you must submit your ways to God for him to direct you. I know that was a whole lot that I just said right there, Mother Roach. God bless you, our Mother Roach. Our Mother Roach is online. God bless Mother Roach. Your birthday is coming up or is it either past? Uh, I know it's in January with my eyes. But it's interesting because he tells us that. With all of that, he will make the path straight. He will make the way right for us. He will change the course that we have been put on that seemed to be an obstacle obstacle course. He would change those things if you would give him your ways. I'm talking about tonight, get out of the way. Somebody put that in the comment line. Get out of the way. And, I, and the reason why I'm saying that because the worst thing, the worst thing Dave Brown, get out of the way. Put it that. The worst thing that you and I can ever do is ask someone for direction and stand in the way. Does that make sense? I said the worst thing you can do is to ask someone for a direction. You don't know how to get from one point to another point. You're trying to ask for directions on how to get to the airport. And you live in uh, Sugar Land. And they'll, they'll tell you how to get to the Intercontinental Airport. And damn, I must be in Houston or know something about Houston. Or whatever the case is, when they're telling you how to get to a certain destination, while they're pointing directions, you stand in their way. You're all in their way. They can't point around you because you're standing in the way. They can't tell you where to go left and right and point the way that you should go because you are standing in the way. If you get out of the way, people can then give you the direction that you need. That is what God is saying. That is simply what God is saying, Sister Sandra. Thank you. Thank you, Dave Brown. That is simply what God is saying, Sister Dave, uh, Debbie. If you get out of the way, I will remove those obstacles. If you get out of the way, I will make the, the crooked places straight. <clears throat> if you get out of the way, you get out of the way. I'll even make your enemies your footstool. But you got to remove yourself. Again, the text says it. Again, God says, trust me. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. He simply says, trust me. Trust me. I've got 10 minutes to do this. He says, trust me with all of your heart. Trust God. Somebody put that, Dave, you're on put that in the comment line. Trust God with all your heart. Yeah, simple. Trust God with all your heart. And when you trust God or trust in God with all your heart, you can't lean. You can't lean 
on your own understanding. What are you saying, Bishop? You can't rely on your own understanding. You can't rely on what you know to work. You can't rely on your knowledge when it comes to a direction that you're trying to go. We're not just talking about a direction and going from one place to another place, but we're talking about the direction of your life. This is not trust the Lord to get you from your house to your job. You can do that. We're not talking about trusting in the Lord to get you from one friend house to another. We're talking about trusting God with your life, with your way. <laughs> trust him with everything about you and let him lead you. You can't do that on your own. You're not prophetic enough to do that. Because if you was prophetic enough to do that, we wouldn't be dealing with this COVID. You wouldn't be dealing with this COVID. And we wouldn't have all this COVID all around us because the prophetic and you would have saw it in the future. Very funny. It's very interesting that you know, all you can see is blessings in the future, but you can't see this famine. So the famine has hit the land. And so we've got to, in the midst of this famine, to ask God for directions. We have to ask God in the midst of this troubling time, uh, Elder Gordon, to trust God for directions. For your business trip, you got to ask God for direction. I know you have uh, a business savvy. I know your dad has business. I know your mom has business and your brothers and all. But you in the midst of what it is God wants to do in your life trip, you have to ask God for directions every single day. God, I thank you. God, I love you. Every single day I strive to ask God, I strive to ask God to lead me in the way that you will go. I strive to ask God, as the scripture says, uh, to acknowledge him so that he can direct my path. Lead me the way that I should go, God. Lead me in the way that I should go so that I won't falter and so that I won't fail. Thank you, uh, Sister Sandra. Directions is what we need. So God is saying, trust me with your whole heart. Lean not to your own degree. Lean not to your own certificate. Lean not to your own um, education. Lean not to your own experience because that's not what guides your life. God guides your life. The steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. And it's interesting because if you want to go in the place God wants you to go, you've got to get out of the way. Oh, God, I thank you. You've got to get out of the way and let God lead you all the way. Being okay. Now, this is a whole phrase. I don't know uh, if y'all can remember this, but uh, put this in the comment line. Now, there's a whole phrase, and I'll repeat it. Uh, it says, I don't want you to put this. Being a better person. This is what the Lord told me uh, coming into this year. Being a better person is not just being a better Christian. So put that in that coming line, those that are listening to me, that are watching me today. Uh, being a better you is not just being a better Christian. Being a better person, being a better you, whichever one, is not just being a better Christian. It's about being a better person inside out. That depends on God. You want to be, thank you, thank you, Sandra. If you, that's right, being a better person is not just being a better Christian. It's about you following God's ways. It's about you following God's ways. So, so for you to say, I got to be a better Christian, I mean, once you become a Christian, you're a Christian. <laughs> I never could understand this trip if you're still on it. People say, I'm, I'm more saving than you. How are you going to be more saving than somebody? Sister Gail, you just came on. Maybe you can help me with this. Sister Gail, I mean, come on, help me. Put something in the comment line to help us understand. How can you become uh, uh, I'm more Christian than you? I'm more saver than you. You can't be more saver than anybody else. When you become born again, when you become uh, baptized believers, when you have the Holy Spirit, you're saving. That's it. You're not, it's no level to save here, another level to save here, and another level, level to save here. Rona, thank you for being there. You, you, that's, that is ridiculous theology. Can't be saving anybody else. I don't do what they do because I'm saving them. There. No, you're not even a better Christian than they are. Either you're a Christian or you're not. Either you're saved or you're not. Thank you, God. I love you tonight. 
And it's interesting because he gives us this to show us that you can be a better you. So, Dale, you can be a better you. You can be a better you if you allow yourself to get out of God's way and let him lead you and guide you in the ways that you should go. Acknowledge these ways so you can confront them and manage them because if you can't manage your ways, and we're talking about this, if you can't manage your ways, that's right, Mother Rosa, let God, let go and let God. He alone has the answer to everything. Thank you, Mother Rosa. We, we have a general online. This is a, this is a general mother in the house of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's interesting because you got to let go and let God, because God won't let, God just won't just, 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 just take over your life. He won't just take over your life. The scripture says it like this, behold. Revelation 3, behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's what Re Re Revelation 32 is not in my notes. But he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Why is he knocking? Because he's a gentleman. He doesn't just come in. He doesn't just burst in. If you don't welcome him in, because the father of that scripture says, if you would open the door, that's the opening of the door inside of your heart. If he's standing at the door, that means the person with the ability to open is on the inside. You have to open the door, then he comes in and sup with you. And you sup with him. But you can't do that if you're in the way. Get out of the way. You're watching TV. Somebody gets in the TV like this. You say, get out of the way. You're trying to look in the mirror to try to dress yourself and fix yourself. And somebody jumps in the mirror. You say, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Can't help you. If you're in, ooh, if you're in your own way. Look at Isaiah. David Brown will put Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. Isaiah. Isaiah 55th chapter, the 8th through the 9th verse. Let go of the me and I. Thank you, Sister Gail. Let go of that. It's no big eyes and little ears. We're all the same. Isaiah, the 5th chapter, the 8th through the 9th verse says this very familiar passage of scripture. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. You heard this scripture said before. I'm getting ready to give you a different understanding of it. Watch it. Stay with me. Sadell, stay with me, Trip. Y'all got to hear this. Stay with me so you can hear what this, what this really means. I'll say it again. For your thoughts, for my thoughts, this is what the Holy Spirit, this is what God is saying through the prophet Isaiah. He's prophesying and says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. He says, your thoughts, neither are your ways, my ways. That's interesting. God says, where are you getting these thoughts from? Wow. That's what he's saying. I'm going to read again. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, my ways, said the Lord. In other words, where are you getting this information from? What's making you think? The way? I don't think like that. Who told you you was a loser? That thought didn't come from me. It's what God is saying. The way, what are you doing? The things you're doing, how you're trying to solve the problems that you're faced with on your job and your family, what you're trying to do yourself, that's not the way I would have done that. He says your thoughts of, of how you think about you in life is so far, it is as far as the night verse says, the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. He says the way you think is no way near. That's what God says. The way you think is is nowhere near the way I think. And the way you act is no way near the way that I act. He says, who bewitched you? Who been in your head? Who told you you was a grasshopper? Who told you that you would become as God if you were taken of the fruit? Who's been talking to you? Your thoughts are so far off. I don't even know where you could have gotten that from. Your ways and how you calculate, how you figure things out. Why are you trying to figure your own life out if I'm telling you I know your future? I know what's in your future. God says that I know what's in your future. And if you if you come to me, if you trust me with your life, I will take care of you because I know the ending from the beginning. Good God all day. I said, God says, I know the ending 
from the beginning, before you ever get started in the jam, I already saw you coming out. But you don't know how to come out of it until you trust me. You don't know what to do until you trust me. And until you trust me, you're going to keep walking around that mountain. Walking around that mountain. Walking around that mountain. And you've been walking around that mountain long enough. My God. Pastor Jerry, I'm glad to see you, man. You're my friend from a long time. And it's interesting because if you get to a place in your life that you trust God with your ministry, with your church, Pastor Young, if you trust God with everything about you, he will lead you out of it. He will guide you in the way that you should go. He will give you clear instructions, but you got to get out of the way. You can't stand in the way while he's trying to show you the way. The worst thing I've met people as pastor in almost 20 years, God, Jesus, almost 20 years of pastoring has taught me this. It taught me that there are some people, have you ever met somebody that always say, I know, I know. You try to tell them something, I know. Oh, I knew. Oh, I thought about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, what? I mean, I, I've done this before. <laughs> I've done this before. I've made up stuff. Because, and I would, of course, I would joke and joke when I had uh, all of all, my sons around me. Brandon was around, Jer, uh, Jermaine was around, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Bishop Hyman, and all would be all around me. And I'll, I'll just make up stuff, and we would just chuckle and we would laugh because people uh, would always say, Oh, I know, I know. Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I knew that. Oh, you didn't know that. I mean, if you knew that, no. and, and I make up stuff because people always think they know. You, you know too much. You know, you know, if you knew as much as you knew, your life would not be in the condition, whatever condition that is. You would need to pray to God for direction. You would need to ask God for anything because you know. Pastor Young, teach this to your church. Teach this to your church so that we can, we can free people all over the world. Free people all over the world that you don't know as much as you think you know. Somebody put that in the company line. You, 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 you do not know as much as you think you know. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. We've got to close. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He directs your path. I got to read Proverbs 16 and 25. That is a way that seems to right. Uh, Dave Brown is the uh, Proverbs. I know I went fast. Proverbs 16, chapter 25th verse. There is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a path before each person that seems right. This seems right to do this. It seems right to go that way. It seems right to say this. It seems right to put my money there. It seems right. But that's what it seems like to you. But for the most part, if you don't consider God, that way will lead you to death. He's talking about ways. He's talking about ways again. Simply meaning when you think your way is right, there's a way that seems right to man. When you think your way is right, you are not willing to do anything to change that way about what you think is right, you would eventually end up being destroyed. I know we say no weapon formed against us. Share this, man. Share this. Share this on your page. Share this. I want to see about 20 shares. Share this. Share this so somebody on your page, your friend list, can understand the direction of their life is out of their hands. It's in God's hand. Don't use subliminal thoughts and music and things to try to make you uh, uh, the tune into your own self and go into all these seances and all these things, the self-helps and all that. I can't help myself. I've got to lose myself and give myself away to God so that he can use me and guide me in all that I should do in the name of Jesus. That's right, Sister Gail. You don't know as much as you think you know. Hallelujah. Six, uh, Proverbs 16 and 7, and I'm done. I'm already a minute over my time. Proverbs 16 and 7. When a man ways please the Lord. <laughs> when a man's way please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. When a man ways please the Lord, when you're, how do your way please, please the Lord? I'm glad you asked me that. Your way can only please God 
when you acknowledge God and allow him to take over your ways and lead you in the way that you should go. Isn't that, isn't that a wonderful thing that you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you? Only for God to please himself. Did y'all catch that? Or did you leave me right there? Did you catch it? Sister Debbie, did you catch it? Did you catch it? Did you catch it? I don't see Vanessa on. Did you catch it? Mm. The Holy Spirit that's living inside of you. God that's living inside of you through the Holy Spirit. By way of the dying of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. When your ways please him. Bishop, how can I please him with my ways when I'm not perfect, when I'm always making mistakes, when I don't make right decisions? It is for you to get out of your way. Get out of your way and let God please himself in you. Bishop, how can I love my enemies and pray for them that despitefully use you? You can't do it. That's no good thing in this flesh. The only way that can happen if you allow Christ in you, the hope of glory, to do it. Christ in you has to do it. Let Jesus please himself. Let God please himself. If you get out of the way, he can do that. But he can't do it if you are in his way. We're talking about it tonight. Get out of the way. Get out of his way. Get up, Mother Rose. You, you, you know, you, they used to say that way back in the day. Get out of the way so the Lord can have his way. And God wants to have his way in your life. But you got to give up. 2021, you got to give up. This is this is the month of consecration. Everybody's consecrating all over the world, all over the church world, that is. You're consecrating. You, you want the, your, your best year to be this year. You want things to start off right, uh, Sister uh, Lior. You want things to prosper and all. But these things are principles. I'm teaching you principles. I'm helping you to understand principles on what can cause you to have a victorious life it could, could cause you to have a happy and joyous life that can cause and have you to be pleasing in the sight of God. It's all about you getting out of the way so that God himself can be made manifested in you. Tell Stephanie, I said, praise the Lord. Tell our mister. And it's interesting because all of this will come together as you understand that God has blessed each one of us with everything that we have. seem like I keep making mistakes. It seems like it's what the testimony of so many of us, not just me, you, and everybody else, seem like I just keep making this. You keep making the mistakes because you're in your own way. Yeah. You keep being in trouble because you are in your own way. You keep, you keep, you keep, you keep getting into a jam because you are in, here it is again, your own way. And as long as you stand in the way, God is going to stand back and allow you to make whatever decisions you want to make. But here is the problem. When God steps back and allows you to make whatever decisions you want to make, you have lost so much of your life so much of your life because of a wrong turn. I got to say this and I'll leave you with this. It reminds me, it reminds me, uh, Sister Esther, it reminds me of God is like a navigator. Those of you who have navigation systems on your phone or in your car, when you put in a certain address, it would navigate you to a direction that you're trying to go. It's interesting because as you start moving, the navigation but tell you where to go. Woo! How do I say this? God does not give you turn-by-turn -turn directions. God doesn't tell you where to go until you start moving. When you start moving, he will tell you, lead you in the way you should go. How does God lead you in the way that you should go? I'm glad that you asked me. He closed doors to force you to go another way. 
<laughs> Somebody put that in the covenant line. God closes doors to force you to go a different way. But then there's some people that are knocked down that door. Pastor Allen, good to see you, Pastor Ernest. Ernest, you're my friend, been my friend for years, man. Been my friend for years. Hello, Bishop. Uh, let me know next time you're in Houston. I really would like to get with you. Blessings to you, man. Grace and peace to you as well. I'm actually. Uh, but it's interesting that God does not give you turn by turn directions. But he says, trust me, because when it's ready for you to make a move, I'll let you know. Hmm. I'll let you know. Your navigation system, preach this, teach this, Pastor Allen, it's your church there in the south side, he, uh, in the south side of Houston, he, he does it like this. He does it like this. So the navigation says you're approaching your turn, left turn. You're approaching the right turn. It's telling you to take veer off. It's telling you to go to the left. It's, te it's telling you all of these directions to go. What do you look like living in the United States of America trying to find a location in a uh, uh, Japan. <laughs> what do you look like telling the navigation system, nah, I'm not going that way. I'm going to go this other way. You will be lost. Like in some of our said, especially in Houston where I'm born and raised, if you miss your exit, and I'm sure I've got some witnesses on here, Debbie, I know, I, I know you're a witness on here, and, uh, and Ernie, I know you drive, uh, and you work out there in, uh, with, with the tow trucks and so forth, if you're still doing that. If you miss your exit, it'll take you at least a mile out of the way to make a U-turn and come back from an opposite direction to the direction you need to go. You have just lost time because you chose to not follow that direction or you chose to ignore it or you was not paying attention. Now, all of a sudden, you're lost somewhere. You make a wrong turn. I said that to say this and I've been telling you I was close but now I'm 10 minutes over my time. I'm sorry, Isha, but I need to tell you this real quickly. One thing about God, thank you, my son, uh, Mike. One thing about God is that when you go on in that path and you get off a path, matter of fact, Mike, I'm going to bring you on. I'm going to bring you on, Mike. I'm going to bring you on. I'm going to bring you on in a second. I just got to say this. Good to see you, Sister April. Thank you for joining. I just got to tell you this. When, when, you, when you get on that path and you get off and be somewhere where you don't need to be, way away from your destination, God does not shut down on you. The navigation does not shut down on you. He does it like this. Here it is. Somebody put this in the comment line. God reroutes your life. He reroute, reroutes your life. So, wow. You get into a relationship that you should not have got in because you ignored advice. You married somebody you should not have married. You got, took a job that you should not have taken. You bought a car that you could not afford, a house that wasn't in a good neighborhood, and now you've got your place, in a, not yourself in a situation that you did not want to be. Wow. Hmm. God says, now I got to reroute you. I'm not going to cancel your life. I'm not going to destroy you. I'm not going to kill you. But I'm going to put you back on the, oh, you're on the north side. Oh, okay, you're over Lockwood near Christ Temple. Okay, it's interesting. Thank you for letting me know that. He puts you in the path of direction of going back in the direction that you need to go. But you wasted so much of your time. It gave you some experience, but you waste so much of your time. You was able to learn something about it, but you waste so much of your time. You waste so much of your time. All of us have wasted so much of my time with bad decisions, bad ways, bad actions, doing things my way, having my own thoughts, leaning to my own understanding have gotten my life where I've lost so much time until if not all of us have admitted at one time before that I should be better, I should be farther in life than where I am. I should be farther in life than where I am. But because I lean into my own direction, huh, 
I'm leading into my own direction. Until now, I've got to allow God to reroute, Sister Denise, reroute my life to put me back where I need to be. That's all I have for you tonight. I can keep going on. I am never out of ministry. I'm just out of time. I'm never out of word. I'm just out of time because I want to be mindful of your time. I want to be mindful. I know you got to go to church tomorrow, but I want you to be able to give. I put our cash app there. Some of you be you, you have been asking me what is the church's cash app. Give us twenty dollars tonight to be a blessing to the ministry. You're at home. Uh, you've been a blessing and you've been getting instructions. I, I want you to be able to give this on tonight so it can be a blessing. You can go to uh, Dollar Sign Earshot Temple. Uh, I'm going to put it out again. I'm doing all this myself. Dave Brown is not here with me. Uh, uh, put Isha Temple, um, dollar sign Isha Temple, and uh, you give $20 tonight if you can. Give $20. And who Bishop Usher talking to? Only those who got it. This is a Saturday night offering that you can give and watch God bless you as he multiple, as he does over and over and over and over again. Bishop Richard Gordon, my friend from South Carolina, is my friend, my buddy. Is online. God bless you. Good to see you, man. We need to connect. I need to go see that church, that big church, that cathedral you're building there in Florence so I can come bring some Isha power in there and so we can break that building in. We want to make sure the structure is right. We're going to come break that, tear that church up. Uh, all right. God bless you. I'm done tonight again. I put out a cash app there. Uh, uh, um, uh, dollar sign Isha Temple. Thank you, Dave Rana. Uh, dollar sign Isha Temple. Thank you. Some of you are starting to give now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mother Robinson. Thank you so much for those who are starting to give now. I'm grateful for it. I'm thankful for it. God is going to bless you indeed. Bad decisions, bad ways, bad actions, doing things my way, having my own thoughts leads to my own understanding, causes me to lose so much time. Thank you, Sister Sandra. You're such a dear heart to me. Thank you, Sister Debbie. Thank you. Thank you for your gift. Thank you. God bless you. I bless you and all of you in the name of the Lord. Everybody on this line that's able to do that, I want you to do that uh, so that blessings can flow in your house from this word. You're sowing that $20 seed into what you heard tonight. That's all you're doing. You're sowing it into what you heard. You're sowing it into what you heard. Get out of the way. Get yourself out of the way. Give that $20 gift so that you can be blessed. Anytime you hear a word, listen to me carefully. I need to do a teaching, perhaps maybe next week on this. But anytime you hear a word that blesses your life, that gives you understanding and opens up your understanding, sow a seed into it. No matter what church it is, what pre preacher it is, sow, sow a seed into it so that it can grow in your life. Just because you heard this teaching tonight doesn't mean you're going to change tomorrow. Sow the seed so it can become a seed so that it can grow up in Jesus' name. That's all I have for you tonight. We'll be ministering again again tomorrow. 